This is actually the second time I will be uh, recording this video uh, because the first one something happened and I was actually wondering why am I all so dark. I remember I just came from uh, from a holiday and spent most of my time in the beach. But anyway, what's up guys? My name is Dylan. So if you're a regular, thank you so much for sticking out with me and uh, watching my videos. If you're new to the channel, um, thank you as well. And if you like, subscribe to my channel, be my friend, and uh, post a comment. Uh, but yeah, welcome. And before anything else, I would like to greet everybody a Merry Christmas and a great 2018 New Year to all of us. Uh, so just to give you an update where I am with my studies uh, well uh, if you've been following me I just uh, got a scholarship I, I just went for the uh, CCNA cyber ops uh, scholarship today 28th of January uh, 28th of December is the official launch or the official start of uh, my batch cohort 5 um, we're in from this day forward and we got like 122 days to actually complete the course which would include uh, taking two exams which is the uh, understanding Cisco cybersecurity fundamentals uh, and the uh, implementing Cisco cybersecurity um, operations so the, the code is uh, the first one is SC S E C F N D and the uh, S E S E C O P S. Uh, my thoughts actually, we were granted early access a, a couple of days ago, so I was able to start on with with the the uh, the materials. And so far, what I can say is, some of you might be wondering, what's the difference between cyber ops and CCNA security? Well. From my perspective, there's a there's a huge difference. Well, one, if you're gonna take up CCNA security, there's a prerequisite of C. You should at least have your CSENT. Um, you know, you know your basic routing and switching. And CCNA security is mostly focused on still different kinds of attacks, uh, but it focuses more on the ASA. When I took the exam a few months ago. Uh, you should know your ASA. How do you how do you protect your routers, your switches? Um, what do I remember back then? Yeah, the different sorts of sort of attacks. Uh, what's a virus? What's anti spam? Or what's a malware? Uh, yeah, it mostly focuses on the LAN and the firewall. And how do you protect your devices? Uh, the difference between HIPs and NIPs. Um, but so far with with this one with cyber ops. So the first one, which is uh, understanding cyber ops uh, fundamentals, it brings you back to the basic. It's like taking C sent all over again because it talks about obviously chapter one would be or first few chapters would be the OSI model, DCP IP, addressing the difference between uh, public private, um, the different ports, UDP, TCP, CINAC. If you've gone through your CCNT or CCNA, um, I think this would be a breeze for you. Uh, though, part of it, they also t talk about, uh, they went through like windows basics operation and i haven't been through i haven't gone through those chapters yet also with linux fundamentals uh wireshark so that's all part of the um the the first exam uh so yeah we're we're uh, uh we're supposed to pass that <laughs> then the second one which is implementing cisco's Implementing Cisco cybersecurity um, operations. It, now it focuses more. Well, it also talks about the different attacks. By the way, in the first um, on the first exam, uh, this one is more focused on the SOC team or your security operations center. So where I work, 
currently I'm part of the LOC team of the Network Operations Center team. Um, this one focuses more on what are like the day-to-day -day tasks or duties. Uh, again, I haven't gone through the, all the materials yet, but by just looking at the topics that are covered, uh, yeah, it, it focuses more on the SOC and what it does. Reminds me of that section when I was studying for the CCIE you written, was it written? I don't remember anymore, where TAC was discussed. So, so that's, I think that's the difference between CCNA security. CCNA security focuses more on the security of certain devices, but cyber ops focuses more on, the first part focuses more on the really the fundamentals of networking. Uh, they did also mention that as a network engineer, your only focus is all the way up to layer four. But as part of SOC, you will have to make consideration all the way up to the application layer, or even layer eight, maybe like the users. So, th so that's it. So, um, so I have un up until October, uh, April to take the two exams. Uh, if you want, I think I'm gonna, once I'm done with all this, I'll probably create a, a, another video just to, just to give you a rundown of how I was able to get the scholarship, my experience going through it, if I pass, if I don't pass, I'll, I'll just put it out there. Because I'm also studying for the CCIE lab, my second attempt, uh, which I'll give you more information about, that, um, an update about that later. Okay, so another thing, so this year I've decided to work um, as a, I, I, I current, if, if you're new to the channel, so I, I am working as a senior network engineer for, for an ISP here in, uh, well, um, I'm located in Brisbane, but my office is in, uh, uh, my company is located in Gold Coast, uh, Gold Coast Queensland and now uh, I work for for an ISP MSP and you know if you if you work for an ISP it's, it, there's really no break technically so I've been with the company for three years and for the last I think two years I would always take this I would always apply for an annual leave to take a break from work uh, but this year, I've decided to work throughout the embargo period. If you're not familiar with embargo, it, it's pretty much when at a certain date, uh, providers like Telstra, Vocus, or whatever, whatever ISP you have, they're just going to stop. I put it in layman's term, they're just going to stop provisioning stuff. So... So, you know, so they're just there to fix stuff in the event something really breaks, you know. Um, so, the, most companies are running on, like, really, really thin resources. And this year, I've decided to be part of that thin resource for my company. So, I was the only senior engineer that was left uh, before Christmas. Then we had the Christmas break, and this week, uh, where we had the uh, because the break was, you know, you have your Saturday, Sunday, then 25 fell on a Monday, then 26. It's also a holiday, so I, I work from Wednesday till today, Friday. Then last week, uh, I was actually expecting. Like I said, it's the first time I'll be working during this embargo period. I had this notion that, oh, it, embargo is supposed to be like slow. People are supposed to start their vacation. But to be honest, it was it was actually the opposite. It was so busy, probably because we were like running on thin resource. If you work for an MSP or an ISP, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it was busy. <laughs> it was really busy, especially, especially if you know you're like, if you're the only available senior engineer that's not on holiday. Uh, but it was good. I um, uh, during my break, 
uh, from Saturday to Tuesday I was actually out of town we went to Byron Bay me and my family it was a good recharge um, then yeah then I think the embargo period will last up until second week of January 2018 but I'm not sure okay anyway a uh, couple of updates uh, yeah Cisco live is happening 2018 uh, last year I was able to go to Cisco Live Melbourne uh, hopefully for 2018 I sh hopefully I'm still praying hoping that the, the company will send me again to, to Melbourne to be part of Cisco Live um, and uh, the big announcement speaking of CCAE I will be my wife has finally agreed to send me to a boot camp and uh, uh, I was thinking between INE and e or, uh, or Narbix uh, boot camp and I was looking at the calendar and looking at their schedules and Narbic will be in Sydney in July so I was able to, to book uh, yeah my, to attend the boot camp so it's yeah, I, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really excited to actually be in in a boot camp and to actually meet the person, Marvik himself, the guy who wrote um, and the, the Cisco Press CCIE books. So, um, yeah, something to look forward to though. Uh, there's actually, and there was supposed to be a boot camp this Feb, but I don't think that would be wise considering that there's he encouraged you to um, because once you sign up for the boot camp he would send you like your workbooks and there's like two workbooks uh, two foundation workbooks and um, and each one is like 400 plus or almost 500 pages each so I would want to be I, I want to go through that I think there's this expectation that you should at least go through the two books before you actually uh, go to the boot camp and I think some of the people who've gone through boot camps, they they also made mention that it would normally be a good idea to attend boot camps if you're on the tail end uh, of your journey, if you're closer to getting your your CCIE lab attempt. So, so yeah, boot camp happening in July. Too excited. So the thing that I'd like to talk to you about is. So that my, my tip for this video is how do you keep yourself you know with with all these holidays going on especially me that uh, I went I worked through the embargo period work through the um, uh, work through the holiday season but for some of us this is our opportunity to go and leave so you know to visit our family to visit our friends to go on holiday so if you're if you're going if you're if you're studying for a certification it can be challenging uh, because that would mean that would mean that you have to slow down on things that you because if you're studying right you tend to go you tend to have this rhythm of, you know every night you get to study and uh, you, you get this momentum so with the holiday season it could it could break that so what are my tips in terms of so how do you survive this holiday season especially if you're preparing for a certification whether it, if it is like CCNA, MCSA or like me CCIE um, <laughs> I'm also doing CCNA cyber ops uh, so what are my tips uh, to prepare for the for, for in the, how do you keep yourself motivated or be in momentum while in this season my tip number one is may sound counterintuitive but take a break so do take advantage of because some of you might be thinking oh what's gonna happen to me uh, I might lose momentum no just just take a break take this opportunity to spend some time with your, your family with your loved ones with your friends uh, go watch Star Wars it's a great movie though um, and yeah, take a break and uh, just uh, just enjoy the moment. So that's my tip number one. 
so don't don't worry about for I'm not saying the entire holiday period just just go take a break all I'm just saying is just take a break because you have to listen to my tip number two tip number two is despite being on break okay so if you're worried about breaking the habit of, and breaking the momentum of studying take it slow you know take it whatever what I do when I was like uh, either this happened last year or two years ago when I didn't do this embargo uh, we didn't do, when I didn't work for embargo or when I worked during the holiday season for a company um, I still find time to at least read up or find a way for you to find a time in your day to, to read something or to do a lab or to go through your index cards. So I don't know if I've showed this to you but this is like my stack of index cards. Um, uh, it's I know it's so old school some of you might be running apps but you know if, if you get the opportunity to you know it's not all the time you'll be spending your time on the beach right so at least find a time for me uh, even even if I'm in on holidays I, I I spend at least five minutes five minutes to read up 10 minutes or 15 minutes better 30 um, to read up on things the important thing here is um, to have progress and consistency uh, you know get to practice at least uh, if you can't do it daily at least do it I don't know maybe as long as there's movement um, it can be like once a week or it can be twice or twice a week it really depends on you the important thing is you should keep on moving whatever happens and in that way that's not gonna break the habit or not that's not gonna break your momentum when you're studying for a certification Number two, and I do this regardless if I'm on holiday or not, is I always remind myself what I want to be and why I want to be that person. Okay, so always remind, um, always remind ourselves, especially this is, good, this is a good habit every morning. So you wake up, you ask yourself, what do you want to become? So obviously for me, I want to become a CCIE, and I, you know, the the then the next question is why do you want to become a CCIE? For me, it's not really the salary. If I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's it's just a personal goal. You know, the more I know, the more that I can actually contribute, the more that I'm gonna be valuable to the company, um, the more that I can actually help you guys out. Uh, it, it, this is not BS. This is actually true. I, th I think if I get that, the more I will get to inspire more people um, to get into networking, to let everybody know that, you know, it, it's possible as long as you put the work into it. And, uh, you know, as Jim Quick would say, find the time, a lot of time, at least definitely the first and the last hour of your day to yourself. Because it will really uh, dictate, you know, uh, it will really dictate the the flow of your life and the direction of your life. And uh, with that, I'm gonna end this video. It sounds so prop, right? But yeah, so um, it's almost 20 minutes anyway. So thank you so much for spending your time to with me. Uh, again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, Thank you. Thank you again for it's been an amazing 2017 for, for me. If you've been uh, if you've been watching me since I don't know I don't even remember when I really started. I'll probably look it up. Uh, thank you so much. And for for everybody who just stumbled upon my video, again thank you. If um, yeah you know subscribe, give a like, and I'll see you again next time, guys. And always remember. Um, keep on studying and it's all worth it.